Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about understanding the difference between injectable BPC-157 and oral BPC-157 dosage forms. So BPC-157, or Body Protection Complex 157, is a peptide consisting of 15 amino acids. It's become really popular in recent years for its potential therapeutic benefits, particularly in tissue repair and inflammation reduction. BPC-157 is derived from a protein found in a human stomach. It promotes healing in a variety of health conditions, from muscle and tendon injury, to gut health and brain fog. BPC-157 is available as an oral pill or an injection into the fatty tissue or muscle. In this podcast, we'll discuss the differences between these two dosage forms and which may be a better option for you. So when it comes to injectable BPC-157, I want to first go over absorption and bioavailability. So injectable BPC-157 can be injected subcutaneously under the skin or intramuscularly into the muscle. Injections ensure that the peptide bypasses the digestive system, allowing for more direct entry into the bloodstream. As a result, the peptide's bioavailability is significantly higher with injections. Now, for those of you who do not know what bioavailability bioavailability refers to, it's the proportion of a medication or peptide that enters the circulation and is able to have an effect. Now, when it comes to effectiveness, injectable BPC-157 is also seen as a better choice for healing injuries like torn ligaments and tendons, muscle tears, and joint damage. Injections can be given close to the injury site, which might help it heal faster. And as far as dosage and administration, the dosage for injectable BPC-157 typically ranges from 400 to 600 micrograms per day for up to 12 weeks, followed by a one-month break. The BPC-157 dose and length of treatment depend on the severity of the condition being treated and the individual's response. And you'll also want to remember anytime we use injectable medication, it requires careful handling. So you need to keep everything clean. You need to wipe off your injection site with an alcohol swab, wash your hands before giving yourself an injection, really to avoid any potential infections. And you'll also want to make sure that you're using the right technique, whether it be into the sub-Q tissue or into the muscle to really really ensure the peptide's effectiveness. So to kind of recap what we went over, what are some pros and cons of injectable BPC-157? So pros of injectable BPC-157 is that it's highly bioavailable and it's more potent. It has direct application to targeted areas where injuries may exist, and it has a faster onset of therapeutic effects. Some cons are that it requires needles and an injection and sterile conditions. It's potential discomfort at the injection site or pain or maybe redness and irritation. And it's more complex administration when you really compare it to any oral form of BPC-157. So now let's talk about oral BPC-157. When it comes to its absorption and bioavailability, oral BPC-157 can be taken either in a capsule or tablet form, and it's digested in the gastrointestinal tract before it enters the bloodstream. This route of administration can result in lower bioavailability due to the peptide having to be broken down by digestive enzymes and stomach acid. However, many people who use oral BPC-157 argue that it still retains sufficient sufficient bioactivity to be effective, particularly for gastrointestinal conditions. Now, when it comes to BPC-157's oral effectiveness, it is often chosen for its convenience and potential benefits for digestive health. Since it directly interacts with the gastrointestinal lining, it may be more effective for treating issues such as inflammatory bowel disease, ulcers, and leaky gut syndrome. It also helps to restore the gut microbiome. While systemic effects might be less pronounced compared to injections, oral administration still provides therapeutic benefits, albeit possibly at a slower rate. So when it comes to dosage and administration of oral BPC-157, doses generally range from 500 to 1,000 micrograms per day, reflecting its lower bioavailability. The exact dosage can vary based on individual needs and the condition being treated. Now, oral BPC-157 is easier to administer, making it more friendly for those who are really truly uncomfortable with injections. So to recap, just some pros and cons of oral BPC-157. BPC-157. The pros would be that it's easy and it's it really truly has a painless administration. It's suitable for gastrointestinal issues and there's really no need for sterile conditions or needles as you're taking it by mouth. Some cons are 
Obviously, what we discussed is the lower bioavailability compared to injections, possibly a slower therapeutic effect for non-gastrointestinal conditions. What These are things referring to like muscle, tendon, and ligament injuries, and really a less targeted delivery. How do we choose between injectable and oral BPC-157. The choice between injectable and oral BPC-157 depends largely on the specific condition being treated, the desired speed of recovery, and it truly comes down to personal preferences regarding administration. For acute and targeted injuries, injectable BPC-157 is generally the preferred route for its higher potency and faster results. Athletes and individuals with significant muscle, tendon, or ligament injuries might benefit more from injections. While on the other hand, and for gastrointestinal health, oral BPC-157 may be more effective due to its direct interaction with the digestive tract. It's also more convenient for daily use, and it's suitable for individuals who are averse to injections. But that's not to go without saying that if you do have microbiome issues or some stomach ulcers, or if you suffer from ulcerative colitis or IBD, the injectable form of BPC-157 will still help. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. Podcast. We love having you as part of our community. And if you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media and have a happy, healthy week.